Hello everyone, my name is Arturo Rivera, I'm the principal at Natsenberg Elementary School. Today we're presenting our IPR. Today's IPR will be presented by our uh, school coaches, ELA and Math, Dr. Thomas for ELA and Mr. Gilmore for Math. Everything that we're doing in our IPR is based on the continuous improvement model, uh, which drives the process for us. So everything that you will see will be based on this. Hello, I'm Lisa Thomas, the Language Support Specialist. Our first instructional strategy is that Netzenberg Elementary will uh, implement instructional strategies aligned to reading for meaning and write to learn to improve student performance in text comprehension and written expression. Our status for the second quarter is we implemented the Hegarty Phonemic Awareness as a supplemental resource for building foundational reading skills in kindergarten through second grade. We are utilizing the explicit and systematic phonemic awareness lessons in kindergarten and first grade as a tier one instruction and as a tier two intervention for second grade. Also, we've been focusing on revising the way we record the benchmark assessment um, on the school-wide data tracker in order to focus more on writing. Our staff has had many discussions and determined the best way to align the DCAS and benchmark expectations was to align the writing prompts with the benchmark rubrics. Let's look at our data for a moment. We see steady increases in the benchmark unit assessments in grades kinder, second, and third. And our next steps, we're going to continue to build the um, uh, SLI or strategic literacy um, instruction program now that um, I'm not in a grade level teaching anymore. So we have uh, been working on growing that program. And uh, we've also been able to um, train new staff that have come on board and we have additional staff that will be joining us soon. So um, we will continue to train them in our ELA curriculum. Our second instructional strategy is uh, using data-informed instruction as defined by the blueprint to increase student performance and literacy. Um, we've spent a lot of time um, on backwards design in our focused collaboration uh, teams. We have a lot of uh, staff members who are really stepping up and being models for others. Our fifth grade team is really rocking it and leading the way for the, for the other teams. We also have some good increases from last year. If we look at our data, if you look at our interim uh, data, you can see, particularly in fifth grade, you see a lot of growth in, in their interim scores in ELA. Our next steps, we're going to continue to work on improving our FCT backwards design time and uh, utilizing that FCT time. Our uh, staff shortages are decreasing and um, we would like to bring in uh, peer observations and be able to have those meaningful reflections and discussions on best practices. Thank you. I'm Mr. Gilmore, the math coach here at Natsburg Elementary School. Our math smart objective is that we are going to increase by 10% over two years and we're still trying to make that goal happen. Our first strategy was implementing the mathematical teaching practices. We have had some success with that, uh, but not all, not all teachers are uh, successfully implementing those. Uh, if you look at our data, our unit assessments, we have a lot of mixed data, uh, but we have seen some growth uh, in a lot of different grade levels. We contribute that growth to a lot of uh, connecting questions to DCAS, posing purposeful questions with modeling and application. Our next steps is I'm going to be working with grade levels and SETs to model um, the mathematical teaching practices. Uh, we, I've made a couple videos that we're going to do uh, in the FCT groups to kind of show the process and also our grade levels have been working on unpacking units. Our other instructional strategy is using evidence to support our instruction. I think we've had a lot of growth in that uh, over the past year. If you look at our data, it would show you that we've had some significant growth. Third grades, DCAS, uh, interim one went from a 46% proficient to 53, so there was a 7% increase. And in fifth grade, there was a 14% increase in students who performed proficiently. We attribute those successes to uh, backwards design We've been doing some tier two interventions, mainly in third grade. Uh, fourth grade, they have a little uh, less pleasant data, but we do attribute fourth grade has a large population of SPED students. So we're trying to find ways where we can offer fourth grade some additional support. Some of our next steps are we're gonna continue to work with our grade levels 
to backwards design, to implement mathematical teaching practices, and to rewrite some of our questions to align to the rigor of DCAS. We are also making good progress on our FCT goal. Uh, one thing that we just implemented, uh, our ET went in and recorded our fifth grade team doing backwards design in their upcoming math unit and just showing a real positive way to look at, dat look at data, look at the unit, and plan accordingly. We're going to use that video as a whole staff to sit down and watch and observe and make plans to do some backwards design in all the grade levels. So our FCTs have vastly improved from last year to this year. Uh, the, the teams are working hard together, they are focused, and we are really impressed with the growth we're making in our FCT. Today's successes and barriers will be presented by our grade levels. Uh, one of the things that we've been trying to do in our school is to get everybody involved. So what you'll see next is the uh, successes and barriers that are presented by grade level. So in both math and ELA, our GLOWs have been working as a team to backwards plan while keeping specific standards and questions as our focus, regularly meeting with building level coaches like our math and our reading coaches, and becoming more flexible when things are changing. Um, some areas for us to grow are adjusting to the constant change, managing full classrooms without constant support or consistent support, and just being unaware of school-wide expectations from the beginning of the school year. Our biggest success has been using backwards design and collaborative planning. This ensures that we're providing standards-based instruction. Our biggest challenge has been that we are all new to the grade level with two team members starting after the school year had begun, so we do not have prior experience to use. For the years of success in math, there has been a continued growth of students moving out of approaching to a meeting and above. In literacy, there's a continued growth of students moving out of beginning to approaching. And in science, for our first interim, there was a huge success of 95% of our second grade students meeting or above. A barrier for math could be struggling to build in intervention after our unit assessments. Literacy is insufficient. Third grade areas of success. The students improved in both ELA and mathematics from years 2021 to 2022. Students are using the resources and strategies that have been taught. Team collaboration and tiered interventions help the students succeed. Third grade barriers and challenges. Lack of reading support at third grade level, removal of programs like reading counts and type to learn that help the students to grow independently on reading and keyboarding, which would benefit their writing and test taking skills. Our areas of success include a slow steady growth in all academic areas. As a grade level, we are all on the same page and being deliberate with our alignment and teaching practices. The biggest challenge we see in fourth grade is our overwhelming population of special education students who are between one to three levels behind in reading. Digital learning has also contributed to factor in these challenges. Barriers this year. are curriculum deficiencies, staff shortages, and clear communication. Successes include effective collaboration, backwards design, and our performance on DCAS assessments. 